Hi, we're back again. We're going to look at another parallel line fitting, another uh, elbow. But this time we're going to look at an oblong elbow. Now we have a couple of examples of, of an oblong elbow. And you can see on the board, they, if we just had what we have there, it's just going to look like a radius throughout radius heel elbow. Because we've got two numbers with it, we can't tell at this point what that shape actually is, so we assume that it's rectangular. Okay, so these ones are not. They're going to be sort of an oval, oblong, oblong we call them. So I've got one here, the width is bigger than the depth, in this case. And then I've got this one here where the depth is bigger than the width. Either one can be drawn in the same, in the same method, the same way. It's uh, just a standard parallel line for elbows. The differences are stretch out and profiles and things. You're going to look a little different because it's not just round. Okay. So, so a couple things off the bat. When we, if you're drawing yourself, if you're making a shop drawing to give to someone else, we always want to indicate that these are in fact oblong, and the only way we can do it is by writing it in. Okay, so we get that indication there to, sh to tell the person that, that these are not uh, rectangular duct. They're not a, a radius through a radius hill elbow. We also want to know that the amount of pieces that they are. And we'll, we'll go with a, with a three piece. Okay? So we need those types of indications. It's not tapering or anything like that. So the, we don't need a size over here. We assume that if it's if it's not written, then it stays the same throughout the fitting. Okay, so two different styles that we'll see these in, or two different examples of an oblong elbow. So um, we're going to work this one. We're going to work the one that's wider right now, and we'll afterwards we'll have a look at the um, the one that's stretched out in the depth instead. Okay, so I'm going to get this one off the board. And we'll start, we're going to get an elevation view of, of this one, uh, the one end bore there. Okay, so following our standard elbow rules, uh, the elbow rule for round elbows, pieces times two minus two will give us how many uh, segments are inside or, or how many gores are inside. Keep in mind that this middle gore is going to have actually two end gores in it. So in this one, two, uh, three times two is six, minus two is four. Four into 90 degrees gives us 22.5 for each uh, miter angle. So let's draw that end gore elevation. Okay, there's my end gore elevation view. Now I want to add a profile to this. And keep in mind that we have a straight section in here. So first off, I'm going to figure that out. And, and what I know is that it's, it's eight across the front here, and it's, and it's five deep. And if it's a true oblong, that means the radius of the depth is going to be two and a half. Now, if I have a two and a half inch radius, that means it's going to come in either side two and a half inches. So I'm going to draw all that in on, and indicate it on my profile here. Okay, there's our profiles done. <clears throat> I've also divided the circles, the, the radiuses on the ends, where my curved section is. And again, it's coming around, curved again here, straight again here, curved again here, and finishing the, around this way. So I'm going to bring those element lines up from my divisions to get all of my element lines in my end core. Okay, as well, I want to follow um, standard practice that we put a seam on center here on this core. Now, <clears throat> it just it, when we put a seam on center of a, of a, a round elbow gore, in this case an oblong elbow, it gives us that symmetry. It's the same height front to back so that we can spin those gores and, and get them opposite sides for each seam. Okay, so let's run a line up at, at the seam height. Okay, 
Now I want to do some, some numbering to the fitting. Now there's lots of, lots of different ways I can number it and it really doesn't matter how you do as long as you match or stretch out to that numbering system that you've used. So for something round, I always use numbers, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue that here. And I'm gonna go around and just start at one here. Okay, so I get one to eight uh, on my, my pattern. And you can see I haven't labeled my seam yet. Now I'm going to label that something different. You could do it uh, just a, like something like an asterisk or uh, auxiliary or a letter to keep it something, but something different. I don't like to just carry on. We could have just come six or uh, five here and then six, seven, eight, nine, but that you'll see it a bit. That would have changed things around. So I'm going to call mine auxiliary. AUX. Okay, so now I can keep track of every line in there. But the extra one, my auxiliary, my seam height, it is a standalone uh, from the normal points we have. And the reason for that is I'm not going to put a seam on the back side. So if I was coming around and say I started here at my seam and I went around, and then remember I'm looping around. So I come back this way. I don't want a seam on this side of it. So I want to skip the auxiliary point on one part of my stretcher. I don't want to use it. And then I come around and then I finish up my seam again. So I can easily jump the auxiliary uh, if it was labeled as a number along the number line. It would, it would end up really weird numbering. Okay, so auxiliary there. So let's go ahead now and draw our stretch out. Uh, in this case, we're going to go from auxiliary, from our seam, we're going to go half the straight, half a circumference, full straight, half circumference, half straight. Okay? So let's get that drawn out. So just to show you what our profile would have looked like and our completed uh, end gore, if that elbow was flipped the other way. So you can see here's my straight now or it should say half a straight. So this is actually going um, five inches in, in width, still the two and a half inch radius here. And then I have the half a straight, one and a half inches here, okay? Same process, our stretch out would change a little bit because our straight is now going along uh, the heel and throat sections, but we'd have that gap in our, in our stretch out, in our circumference, where we have to split it to make it that oblong shape. Okay, so the stretch out would change a little bit according to however we labeled this. But you can go about the same way. Uh, we're still going to put a seam on center here. So that, that will be one of our points, but we're not going to um, skip it again like we did last time. We can keep that point going the whole time. Okay, so you can just start off here. Uh, you, can, you could label as uh, one, two, three to seven here. And, and then just create that out to your stretch out. Okay, so a different version of the oblong elbow. Okay, so you can see now I've got my stretch out here now. I've got my half straight, one and a half inches, my half circumference, which I've divided into six equal parts, a full straight along that back side where there is no seam, another half circumference, and then the half straight finishes off back at auxiliary. So I just jotted those down just to, so we see those measurements. And those would all go, here's our one and a half here. Half circumference is there in between those red, right? Okay, and these one, these were pretty close to, to looking the same width, but this one is truly a half straight. This one is truly a one twelfth division of the circumference. Okay, so let me remove that just so we, we get. Ooh, we're not looking at too much stuff. 
and then let's label this. Let's, we're starting out auxiliary again, right? So let's go auxiliary. And it doesn't matter which way we go, let's go to five. Five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five. Again, is at the start of our straight, which is correct here. And then we jump to four, three, two, one, two, three, four, auxiliary. Okay, from there it's, it's standard parallel line. We're just going to project our, I've made mine right inside here. So I can project all those lines across. Okay, if I was doing this in the shop, I would have calculated a full blank as well, based off of my miter angle and calculate out my seam height and stack that up however many gores we had, in our case four. Uh, and then I can calculate the stretch out this way for my blank size. So I'd have the whole uh, piece that I required in the shop, but I, we don't, I don't have room for it here, of course. Okay, so let's run all these lines across. Okay, from there, it's just a matter of, again, going and locating where my points hit my stretch out points, where those element lines come across and match with the same element lines here, okay? Now, we're starting out auxiliary, so let's follow that one. And we're starting here. And then we went to five, so that's up one. And again, six, up one, seven, and eight to the top there. And then we're coming back down. Again, it's following our normal pattern, okay? Now here's where we skip auxiliary. We're going from five to four, so we're gonna skip that point there. But we didn't, even, we didn't draw in this one here, right? So again, keeping track, we're going four. So let's follow four and here. We skip this horizontal because we didn't put that vertical in there, okay? And then we just follow suit, follow our pattern. Oh, that's good. There we go. So you see, it's a similar fish pattern, but in this case, we have a, de a real straight line here, and then our curve comes in, and then straight again, Curve comes in straight. So let's draw in those straights anyways. Oblong elbow. Thanks. <laughs> 